In this video, we're going to focus on how we can filter a chart based on the month and year. So for example, here I will select December and then we will get the December range from December 1 to December 31. Or if we go back here, let's say we're going to get this from February, from 1 February all the way to 28 February. Of, of course, we want to go to, for example, uh, 2023 next year. We can go and check as well what we have for the future and then we can reset it as well and there we are it's going back to one to the very end of this specific year 2022 so let's start look how to do this so let's start look how to filter charts by month in chart.js so the first thing what we need is we need to go to chart.js3.com getting started this specific link which you can find as well in the description box and i'm going to grab here the boiler template so once you're on here scroll down and copy this chunk of code here copy all of this if you want to understand what this code does make sure you watch this video here so then i'll paste that in there i'll cut this out put that in here save that refresh there we are and what i want to do is i want to maximize the chart size so i'm going to scroll down to the chart box say here 80 percent save refresh there we are and then what i want to do is i want to make here of course we have to work here with the dates so to do this, I'm going to chartjs.org and then we select here on ecosystem. So once you're on ecosystem, we can scroll down here and look for the date adapter. So we click here on the adapters and then we have here the three options. In this case, I will use the date FNS adapter. I would recommend, by the way, use either this one or Loxon because this one has been deprecated. The team of moment they meant they went to Loxon and they work on there. So that's the most important one. I'm using the date FNS in this case because it requires only one JavaScript file and I won't use anything of the built in features here. So I'm going to grab this date FNS. So you can see here chart.js adapter date FNS bundle. So that's the one I need. And I will make sure that that one is loaded after the chart.js library. So once we did that, you can go back here, refresh, of course, nothing happens yet. And what we need to do now is we need to change the scale here and indicate here now the type of chart, which is the time chart, comma. And then what we're going to do here is I want to show the days of the month. So every single day will be shown in here. So I'm going to say here, time object. We are allowed to do this now because we specify it here. And then we're going to say here the unit and the unit will be equal to day. So we want to show the day. If I do this and refresh, of course, right now, there's no day structure. So it doesn't recognize the structure because we have only this here. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a few dates, 2022. And let's say here, 0101. And then another one, we say 2022, 02 for February. And then uh, I guess 02, doesn't matter. So I'm just going to grab some of these. Then what I will do is I'll get another one and that one is in October and then another one. Uh, let's put that one for December. And finally we do another one for the year ahead. All right. So we have now for February, 2023 as well. So I save this refresh. Now it start to work. However, we have this here. What we want to do is now a drop down here where we can select basically the month showing only a specific month so how do we do this well what we're going to do here is we're going to put in here a drop down or sorry not a drop down let's put in here just a date selector so i'm going to say input type and we can say here month and slash that if i save this refresh we have now here a month selector with year so if we select something you can see here the value this will be very important because this here helps us to select here, for example, from June 1 till the end of June. Of course, to do this, what I need to do here is to say here on change. So when we change the value, we want to do something. And in this case, I want to say filter chart and the value of this, which is whatever we selected. That's the value. So now we have that. What I want to do now is we want to grab this. Scroll down here and create a new function. And this function will be, let's say, the month. However, this month is the reference of this. That would mean 
that uh, the month is not the value itself but the entire element so if I select that just select something you'll see here it would just grab the entire element I don't want that I want to grab the specific value so if I say dot value I will get the value attribute of that input so then if I select something we get here the year and the month so we don't get a day specific so we don't know if it's 1 or 30 November for example so now we have this and what I will do here is we're going to start to work and I will make it very simple we're going to make a very simple uh, structure for this so the first thing what I need to do is we want to make sure that we grab the year independently and the month independently so what we have to do is grab this and then trim the certain uh, characters so for that let's say here for the year I'm going to say constant year equals and then what I will say here is I'll get the month value or maybe this should be even like a date the date value that makes more sense because it's not only month it's a year and month so we're going to grab here the date value and then we're going to say here dot sub string and what do I want to remove or maintain what do I want to maintain? I want to maintain basically the first character all the way to the fourth, which is character, the first one here in this case is character zero. So from zero, comma, how many characters starting from that point? Four characters. If I do this, then we have here now a console log, and let's grab here the year. We should see now the year specifically. If I select this, we have the year. All right, so the same we'll do here will be from here and uh, we can copy this let's put it in here we'll just say month but the month is slightly different we will have here we will start at zero and I'm probably here what is that if I'm not mistaken it should be the fifth character and then here I'm probably till eight or seven let's see seven if I do this save refresh and then of course I want to make sure that we show the month refresh select the option there we are all right so now we have those two specified now we can work with a function here and the reason why this is important is because in here I want to specify the minimum value and we could do here let's do a, a basic value of 2022 we say here the full year that's by default we want to show but afterwards if we're going to filter we would like to filter that uh, depending on what we select however this here is the max value so we show here just a entire year from 1 all the way to 24 well it's basically to the end of the year it's just a week section here every section equals one week all right so we have this now now what I want to do here is we're going to just grab this we say my chart dot and what, we want, what I want to do now is I want to get from my chart, I want to go into this minimum here. So from my chart to config, and from config to option scales, x scale, and then the minimum value. So my chart to config dot options dot um, scales dot x dot min equal. Well, let's look at this. We have this here. Uh, that's correct. So equal what exactly? whatever we have selected and remember what we selected here um, well it would be basically the start date and I guess we should just make a specific constant for this but then let's work on this constant so the constant start date let's grab this here equals the following well we have here um, the date value which basically shows the month and or the year and then the month and then we're going to put in the date as well to do this I will use here backtick backtick which is on your keyboard under the escape button and I'm going to say here this is, this is just another way of concatenation so we concatenate it and then we say here dash zero one we always know that this will always be the same value so if I save this now refresh and you will see here now if I do something of course right now it does not work and the reason why it doesn't work is I didn't say here to update the chart. So I'm going to say my chart dot update to update our changes. So now we should have something here. There we are. So now we start on 1 November and if I move here to July, we have 
on July. However, what we're still missing is the year, sorry, or sorry, the end of the month. I just want to have the 30 days or 31 days. So what we have to do here is to make something intelligent to figure out our ending date. So we're going to say your constant end date equals anything here. Well, let's put in this here, but later on we have to change that because we need a formula for this because we need to make sure that JavaScript know which date we are in. And once we know the date, we need to know how many days does that date have? Because November only has 30 days, but December has 31 days and etc. etc. So we have to solve this issue. For that, I'm going to use a simple function. I'm going to say here, I'm going to create a, a nameless function here. We'll just say here the last day of the month. And this last day of the month is a function, and this function needs two parameters the year and the month which are going to use it like that. And later on we can grab these, we already have them prepared. And then what I want to do is uh, function error expression, of course, put it in here. So in here, what I want to do is the following. I want to return something. So what I'm going to return here is basically going to grab, make a new date out of it by using a date object. So let's put this like that for now. And I'm just going to say here, new date. And this new date requires three values, the year, the month, and the date number. So because we want to have the last date, we don't know what that is. We can put in a zero and by default, JavaScript will grab the end date or the end date of that single month, which is absolutely phenomenal. If you do, if you do for example, 10, you would specify the 10th of that month. So we want to have zero to get the end of the month. Say dot get date. You have this. And uh, let's see here. And let's double check this by doing a console log. Uh, and we do a console log here. So once we have done this, what of course we need now is to activate this. To activate this, we can just say here the following. I'm going to put in here a uh, uh, the last date, and then we're going to say here the year, comma the month. That's the only one we put in here, which is that these are the uh, the arguments in this case, and these are this is the parameter. That's the right term. So once I do this, we should be able to see here what's going on. And if I save this, let's refresh and check that. Select something, and then you can see here we get the 30th. We know it's November, it's 30. So if I do February 28th, so if I do March, that's 31. So we get the information that we need. And that's uh, line 117. 117 is this one here. All right, so now we have this. We can just say here, return. And that's it. So we're going to return this value by having this. So that would mean that this will give us the ending value of the day, 31, 28, or 30. So what we're going to do now is we can copy this and just put that in here as a dollar sign to make it a variable or a, uh, well, I guess a variable function in this case. And then we should have here the right selection. So if I save this now, refresh, and uh, let's do the refresh again and select now June, there we are. We have June 1 till, all right, interesting. It's not working yet. So I'm going to say here, the end date will be the last day, with the month and year. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Oh, of course. So the reason why it didn't work, of course, is I forgot to say here, we have to copy this. And then instead of min, we should do max. And of course, this part needs to be in here. So then it will look property refresh select now let's say february 1 all the way to february 28 beautiful march 31 what is december this year there we are you can see december it shows you the value of the second december that we have in here what is very nice is we even have here the option if we scroll a bit down we can select here the years and let's select here 2023 february 
we had a value as well specified on the 2nd of February and the 2nd of February in this case of 2023 is as well February 28 and if I'm not mistaken I think February 24 would be till 29 there you are so this works all very nicely so imagine if you want to reset it we can put a quick reset button here as well uh, how would you can do that one I'll just make a simple reset button by just saying here above uh, here we're going to put in another input uh, or not even an input it will be just a button type and then on click we'll just say reset and reset I'll just make it simple it will not be anything specified I'll just make it a quick hard code but you can make a soft code out of it by looking what's the starting point of the year and uh, there's so many options for that however I will not go too deep in that I'll just say a reset just to give you an idea how to do it let's grab this go down here and then we have the function let's create a quick function for this and we can just grab all of this then remove this I'll just make it simple by saying here this will be the 2022 January and then 2022 31st of December so that should be 1231 if I save that and update refresh and then now select something November all right then reset there we are once we reset it goes back to January 1 to that and maybe we could even put that one back to normal but that's more JavaScript itself however this is basically the way how we can quickly filter on month in Chart.js. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to know how you can filter between specific dates in that case I have this video here where you can select from one starting date and an ending date as well.